Good evening, and welcome to Sioux City by Night. I am your storyteller, Patrick, and uh, we are in for a special episode tonight. Uh, we have split the party, as they say. Uh, I wanted to get some extra narrative points in, and uh, this, I felt, was the most uh, cohesive way to get it done. Now... Sioux City rests in a precarious place. It is the last major metropolitan area on Highway 20 before you get into the uh, Denver area. There is the broad expanse of the Great Plains, desolate and empty. There is Sioux Falls to the north on I-29, and there is Omaha to the south. On I-29. Omaha has long dominated the region ever since Sioux City's financial decline. But to the kindred of the area, Sioux City's the last major Camarilla stronghold outside of Chicago in the region. Omaha has been claimed and divvied up by several barons and Prince Jimenez of Sioux City has seen fit that diplomatic relations should still be maintained with the Council of Barons, as they call themselves. And that is where we will bring in our coterie, or two-thirds of the coterie. There we are. Say hello, gentlemen. Uh, out of order, uh, I think I usually go after. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I am uh, Greg, and I am playing Francis Jacobs, the Ventru. And I'm Steve, and I'll be playing the Bruja Flint. And Sarah, the uh, Tremere of the Coterie, will be joining us in her own separate scene after the intermission. So, before we dive into tonight's story, uh, let's get some, uh, some of the housekeeping done. It is a fresh night, uh, so let's go ahead and make your rouse checks, gentlemen. I make it for the night. Okay, and Francis? That is a fail, so I am up to three hunger. <laughs> yes, because the, uh, the encounter with the, uh, with, with the two arguing gentlemen the night before did not go as planned. Oh shit, what, sideways? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the Coterie is still waiting to hear... Uh, here back on Prince Jimenez's uh, official uh, yes or no on the scheme that was presented to them uh, by the visiting Venturu. But in the meantime, uh, Prince Jimenez has seen to it that uh, another diplomatic exchange needs to happen. Uh, between the Camarilla in Sioux City and the Anarch Barons of Omaha to the south. Uh, this is not the first meeting between both sides. However, uh, this is the first time that uh, Prince Jimenez has asked any of the Coterie to go. Uh, per the arrangements... Uh, between uh, our third and the visitor. Uh, she will be having a meeting with Elisabetta Giovanni of the Hecata uh, while Flint and Francis have loaded up into the pickup and are heading down 
to Ottawa, which is the halfway point on I-29 between Omaha and Sioux City. Ottawa is treated as a neutral ground between both sects. Uh, there are no uh, local kindred to speak of. Uh, there is, uh, along I-29, there is a large truck stop. And there are some strategically placed uh, old broken down big rigs and trailers in the back lot that affords a little extra privacy for anyone wishing to uh, participate in these meetings. But the scene opens with Flint and Francis driving down I-29. So, <clears throat> who are we meeting again? We're meeting Baron Mal uh, Malone. Um, Keegan's been someone I've known for a bit. Um, you know, for the reasons oh. we'll have to find out. But I'm I'm uh, I'm wondering how urgent this had to be since. It had to be done without Rachel. Yeah. It's a shame that she's not coming along, but... Boy's trip. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is almost a continuation from, from... <laughs> last night's festivities. Oh, yeah. Fishing, yeah, fishing trip part two. <laughs> two. <clears throat> <laughs> Just in case. So... Uh, as far as Baron Malone is concerned, uh, he does have a bit of a reputation for being one of the more hot-headed Bruja uh, mm -hmm. in the area. He was nominally uh, part of the Camarilla prior to um, the incident which caused the Bruja to leave the Camarilla en masse. Uh, insofar as, you know, if you were an Anarch before the, uh, before the big split, you were still in the cam. You were just not so, uh, diligent of a member. Um, but, uh, Baron Malone took full advantage of the Bruja exodus and literally flipped off Prince Jimenez and headed to Omaha as soon as word spread. Um, now, Flint, uh, you you do know a little bit more about Malone. Uh, yeah. He's, as far as his politics go, he's always had an eye for sitting in some kind of a big chair. And he does have the occasional good, valid point, but uh, it's also, you get one one third decent rhetoric, and then two thirds just bombastic drivel designed oh, yeah. to, There's, yeah. <laughs> there may be a gem in this pile of dirt, but we're going to get <laughs> to that gem, hopefully. Exactly. So... Uh, the empty uh, highway here spreads out ahead, and the truck passes through Salix and Sloan, these small, out-of-the-way farm towns, and eventually uh, you see the sign that says, Ottawa, five miles. Come visit Blackbird Bend Casino. Now, as far as uh, the prince's directions, uh, he left it very vague, other than the coterie, whoever was available, needed to speak to Mr. or Baron Malone. And everyone else is... Uh, Everyone else who's participated in these in these talks is indisposed of, or indisposed, I should say. <laughs> but uh, Flint, you uh, pull your truck up, 
and uh, the directions given to you were, oh yeah, look for the look for the uh, the the red and blue semis, you know, parked you know perpendicular to each other in the back, and that is where the meeting is supposed to go down. Got you. I look to Francis. I go, hey. If uh, things go a little weird, just run to the back to the back of the truck. All right. No, yeah. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to make sure I have a uh, rifle and a shotgun tucked in a toolbox in the back cab, just in case things go south. And, you know. Uh-huh. I understand. I understand how we handle some situations when. Rachel's not around, so I'm going to make sure that we're <laughs> prepared. Yeah. And yeah, as per usual, I got my Silence 9 tucked in the back of my waist, you know, in a concealed holster and a couple extra magazines. Okay. As well. So, uh, as the truck pulls up. Uh, you kill the headlights and you get out and you walk around the side of the uh, the semi. And standing there, <clears throat> excuse me, going to be doing a lot of that tonight. Standing there um, in all of his clan leather jacket glory <laughs> is Keegan Malone. Uh he he doesn't necessarily look like he you know was a uh, a leftover of the punk movement from the eighties, but you know the the stereotypical when 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 Aventru says oh that damn Bruja, the, <laughs> Keegan it almost seems like he goes out of his way to look the part. So crusty, nasty, old dried blood leather jacket uh, with. Uh, you know, some spikes coming out of the shoulders. Uh, he's got uh, half of his head shaved completely bald. Um, and he's got a, uh, uh, a f- uh, like a firebolt tattoo on the side of his head. Uh, the other half, he's kept it long and it's uh, uh, actually uh, clustered up in uh, dreadlocks. Uh, you can see that uh, he has a uh, he had a broken nose before his embrace and uh, he's looking he, he's f- even for a kindred he's looking pretty uh, heroin chic very thin very gaunt um, but he's kind of leaning up against his uh, his Harley He's got his arms crossed, and he's got a lit cigarette dangling out of his mouth, which he takes and flicks it off uh, when he sees you guys approach. Uh, he appears to be alone. Okay. So, you're the two that Jimenez has sent down tonight? That is correct. That's correct, Baron. Hey, I know you. He points at you, Flint. <laughs> Yes, you do. How you been? Yeah, I've been better. What the fuck are you still doing kissing Cam ass? I find it easier to fight with him. You know, a lot of us said that back in the day, and look where it got us. But then again, (laughs) look where it got the Ventrue. I've seen a lot of shit in my life. I've... I feel comfortable in it. Alright, whatever. And so, yeah, I know you... What's, uh... What's your story? And he's pointing at you, Francis. Well... Name's Francis, and... I'm a Ventrue, so... I feel like that... Make your assumptions, but... When I was... Younger, I wasn't too far away from where your mentality was at. I don't think uh, you have the right to really speak for what's going on in my head. 
Um, as an aside, what are you two wearing tonight? I should have asked this before we got in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, go. <laughs> um, it's as simple as what I'm wearing right now. Dickie's work shirt, Dickie's work pants. You no, know, I no. took this off of a hard-working man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no other accoutrement to speak of. No, okay. I just I I look like I should be a custodian somewhere. Okay, Francis. And Francis is wearing uh, dark wash jeans. Uh, pretty rugged. They're fancy, but they are also utility purposed. Um, he is wearing a. A black polo, specifically, so he could show off his bling and watch. Okay. I dig that. So, here's here's what's going down. Uh, the, the council in Omaha is not too fond of... Jimenez sending all the troublemakers down to feed. You guys are bringing way too much heat on us, and he wants to see that stopped. If he can't control you guys feeding and keeping it out of the news in a city as small as Sioux City, he doesn't deserve to be sitting in that fucking chair. So what do you got to say to that? I mean, it makes sense. He should be making sure. Where is the... Where are these locations going? Are you... Can well, you give us more closer details of where this is happening? Maybe we can check on it ourselves, make sure things are getting taken care of. Well, I mean, the, the main... The main place that... Uh, the the main place that uh, the uh, the messy feeders go is North Omaha, which is just right off. It's the first exit into Omaha. Once you get out of you know, once you once you're heading south down twenty nine, you just turn off on a six eighty and you're in North Omaha. And you know the neighborhood was already shit to begin with, and now this guy this is popping up. You know you could at least. You know, spread it around, you know, drive the extra down to Council Bluffs. But I don't control, you know, who goes where. And no one should really control who goes where, which is why Jimenez shouldn't be shutting out his territory to the messy feeders in the first place. I see where you're coming from. So you need to see to it that Jimenez sees where you're where I'm coming from. That's what we do. We make sure that the uh, issues that are happening, we uh, we help try to solve them in one way or another. And, Flint, let's be completely honest. You and I are so-called messy ears. But we're able to hide what we do. We're able to control it and play it off. Uh, Messy as in grotesque. I shouldn't say messy as in newsworthy. You, yeah. I, you know, I, you, we are all on the same wavelength. You know what I mean. There's plenty of licks who, you know, like their, their, their blood a little roughed up. You know, there's something to be said for that every once in a while, but, you know, come on. It can't be making news. It can't be bringing heat onto your doorstep. Exactly. So you see why I'm pissed. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. you know, yes, it's a small area. There's not a lot of big populations, but there's more than just one place. Yeah, I get that. But, listen, if the two of you can make it work, obviously... There's got to be other kindred in Sioux City who can make it work, too. And you don't need to be coming down to Omaha. You know, so just see to it that you can deal with this and get it squared away with Jimenez. This needs to stop or it's going to be trouble. 
And I don't mean to sp I don't mean to speak for all of the barons of Omaha, but that's how it's going to be. Like there, there's going to be there, there's going to be some extra heat down south for Jimenez if this doesn't stop. I I take you. everything in this, yeah, consideration and no, I mean, obviously Omaha is a larger population than Sioux City, and anything hits Sioux City's radar, it's bad news for us. We can't be drawing unwanted attention to us, so drawing unwanted attention to you, even at a higher population, is still bad. I get what you're saying. So thank you. We, we will definitely send word up. I mean, like you're saying, Council Bluffs, there's Sioux Falls. I mean, there's a lot of other places that we could go and branch out. No, uh, I, I'm suggesting that it stays the fucking Sioux City. Okay. No, the... Yeah. No, it, I see. I see what you're saying now. I'm sorry. Good. Good. Now fucking keep it that way and... Tell Jimenez that I'm expecting a response tonight. He knows my number. I think you'll get your response. Anything else? We good? I think we're good. Then get the fuck back up to Sioux City. This is neutral ground. Says Jimenez. Uh, mm, mm, there are some barons who are... Let's just say we're uh, we're thinking of expanding, and uh, the uh, the alley cats coming down to Omaha is uh, you know we 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 need to that that that's the the thing that's going to keep this uh, keep this neutral. So make sure to get that point over to Jimenez. As you wish. And he gets on his bike, starts it up, twists the throttle for effect, and does, <laughs> it, does a spin out, making sure to kick up gravel on the two of you. Mm -hmm. I stand still. And his bike leaves the parking lot and gets on to 29, and he breaks south as fast as he possibly can. I mean, I see where the guy is coming from, but what a fucking dick. I mean, yeah, I, that's that's the obvious factor here. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I understand, but... You know we're not going to be able to stop the flow of people going into Omaha, but... <laughs> Or can we stop Omaha people venturing up here? I'm assuming it's happening. However, what we have to do is we're going to have to shepherd the herd. Teach them our ways. Find a way to move them out of that area. If they learn that they're fighting... If, if something happens... Maybe they'll spread out. Oh my, he said that we were sending we were sending troublemakers. Maybe we find out who's going down there. Find out who's the uh, maybe there's some low less level desirable. discipline, no less desirable person. You know, if something happens to him, it will probably scare everybody off. Take an example. Let's uh, let's call Jimenez. Let's pass the idea by him in the nicest way possible. Sounds good to me. All right, so the two of you head back to the pickup, and you start heading north on 29 back to Sioux City. Um, are you... So you are going to... Uh, try calling Jimenez directly on an open line. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna... We're gonna make it back. I assume that we left early. Yeah. 
Um, so you, the night is young. Yeah. Again, I'll I'll call <clears throat> Zeke. Well, yeah, no, we'll just... call Zeke and have his people get a hold of Jimenez's people and yeah. make sure that we're ready for a phone call once we get in. I think that would work. If not uh, a personal I, meeting. I'm assuming we have some sort of code set up with Zeke, that way we're not openly talking. Oh yeah, he, he's the master of double entendre. No, he, yeah. He, yeah. yeah, you'll be... He'll 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 understand what you're trying yeah. to you know yeah. ghouls be ghouling and such <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so so, so Flint. We'll call. Yeah, do you want to call? Do you want to call Zeke or do you want me to call? Him? You or call. You're him driving. Though. Yeah, yeah, you're driving. So yeah, I'll... responsible. Yeah, <laughs> you could have Bluetooth. I don't know how new the truck is. Yeah, I don't know if burner phones, phones have Bluetooth. I don't think it's safeties. <laughs> I'm responsible. <laughs> so, uh, so you are going to go ahead and call Zeke. Um, yeah. Now, we'll, we'll say that um, you guys got on the road um, at uh, 9.30. It's a two-hour round trip from uh, Sioux City to, or to Ottawa. So it's around 11.30. So it's, it's still decent. It's still decent yeah. time. So... Um, <clears throat> give me one second here. Just making some quick adjustments. Cause the the lag in OBS is pretty gnarly tonight. There we go. All right. So the uh, the phone rings, and after a couple of seconds, Zeke picks up. Hello, sir. Hello, Zeke. How's it going tonight? Uh, it's it's going. It's uh, pretty slow. Nothing really major to speak of. What can I do for you, sir? Uh, I need you to reach out and see if we can't have guests over to talk about the party we're planning. Understood. Understood. Um, I will, uh, I'll reach out to the appropriate people and we'll see what happens. Uh, this is... I, I'm assuming this is a uh, ASAP sort of arrangement. Yes. Yeah. Alright, I'll, I'll see what can be done. The parties, you know, the, the, the planning thereof takes some time. So I will... I'll see what I can do and I will make sure to uh, text you when I hear back, okay? Sounds good. And I just want to say you do plan the best parties. I the try. Balloons, everything. I mean... Top notch. I, I do try, sir. I do try. Hey. All right, and he hangs up. <clears throat> so we've done the uh, asking for permission. Let's be prepared to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> um, I want the two of you to go ahead and roll intelligence and occult, please. Not a bad roll for me. Um, what if my hunger is higher than my dice pool? You can opt out of the roll. I'm, this is not. I'm a... going to opt out. All I right. got three. All right, so three. Uh, Flint, you, you've you've been around Sioux City long enough to know that there's, you, you've got an idea who might be the uh, the alley cat. Or two that might be causing some issues down in Omaha for uh, for Keegan and his people. Okay, um, so let's one of, one of them's a Nosferatu and the other one is a Toreador. Okay, probably go and get some information on the Toreador. They trying to catch a Nas is going to be a little bit harder than trying to catch a Toreador. Okay. Well, it's going to be hard for you to gather intel when you are driving. Yeah, I don't have that much time. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to, I don't have time to do that at, at all right now. But uh, no. As long as I as long as I know of, as long as I know of a Toreador, I can make sure that I bring that up. That you know, 
again, if we have to do what we do without talking to Menez, at least I have my mm. pinpoint plan of why we did such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sometimes you just got to get the job done, you know? Right. <laughs> um, you know, this wouldn't... Uh, th this drive back, there are several rest stops. I was... Just going to say that I yeah. would like to take the opportunity to have a snack before. You need to grab something. You need to hit a vending machine. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so there, there is. Um, I I can't remember where exactly it is, but I do know that there is a rest stop. I think ten or fifteen miles north of Onawa. Um, and as a side note for all of you watching this, this stretch of I twenty nine. Is perhaps one of the most boring pieces of highway you'll ever drive on. This is yep. such a long, boring drive. <laughs> it's like an hour and 15 minute drive from Sioux City to Omaha in the real world. But, dear lord. I mean, it's like population town of like 300 after population of 300 after 300 to Omaha. It's... Mm. It's bad. It's the closest yeah. thing to feeling to a kindred, because kindred, you feel like you're living forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. All right, so... Um, I'll, I'll say that uh, there are... Uh, th there are no, um, like, regular cars parked here at this rest stop. Uh, there are, however, quite a few semis that are lined up. Um, now this is, this is going to be a little, a little tricky here for, uh, yeah. for Francis. Now, uh, Flint, I, I would say you've, y you will be able to assist Francis in his endeavors here. Uh, but it's just a matter of how we're going to go about doing this. So, um, what is Francis's plan? For getting this done. Well, tricky thing is, I have to feed on someone who is intoxicated, drunk specifically. Yep. And as much as faith as I want to have in our truck drivers as being sober while driving, Oof. yeah. In theory, they're stopped for the night, though. In theory. In theory. So it's just a matter of getting lucky. Now this is the I'm time. I'm hoping that person of your, whoever that person of your stature carries a flask on them at this point in time. <laughs> I am going to look for the most beat down, ratty looking truck, knowing that the person does not take care of their vehicle, meaning that they have no care for themselves. Something fresh, like they've already been drinking. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like. I'm talking okay. about like, yeah, like it's two, it's 2020 and they're driving like a 1980 Peterbilt. That's <laughs> okay. Just beat the hell. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I, I okay. I I'm liking this. I'm liking this concept. I'm I'm digging. I I'm vibing with you here on this one. This will be. Uh, let's see. Give me a second. Uh, let's go ahead and roll, um, that's going to be a good one, uh, Resolve and Insight. I will assist your roll. Okay, so that will give you one extra die. Good well, news is, half and half, half blood, half regular. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, one, two, the six and above are successes, correct? That is correct. One, two, three, four, five successes. Nice. Uh, yeah. Any, 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 uh, any criticals on that one? Any tens? There was, there was one ten and it was on a regular. Okay. Okay. Just checking it. Yeah, so out of six possible dice, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, I'll, I'll allow this. I, 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 
we'll we'll say that you've you found the uh, you found a truck that you think is going to suit your needs, and in fact, um, if you're not mistaken, it looks like there might actually be a couple of uh, crumpled up beer cans that have gotten chucked out the window already. This looks very promising. Pull over here. Okay, so Flint, you uh, stop the truck. I'm assuming you. Stop the truck. Yeah, now you, you kill the engine and turn off the lights? Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, we'll do this. Uh, I didn't. I can't. This will be like a three and out scenario, so you've made your first roll here, okay, to find the truck. Now, how are you going to gain entry into the vehicle? Just, uh, just out of curiosity, how full is the parking lot? Is it? There's, we'll say there, there's five semis here. This guy is parked uh, way up in the front. He was the first one to pull off because, God damn it, he needed his drink. And I'm assuming since, are they pa uh, parked parallel or like... They're, 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 they're parallel. Hmm. With them being parallel... And him being at the front is going to put me in a situation because I'll be visible from every other truck. Okay. Oh, what the fuck? I'm a venture. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about my powers. Durr. <laughs> All right, um... I'm not going to turn on off, because I don't want everyone looking at me. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to... I'm going to... walk around to the front of the cab, go up to his door, knock on the window to get his attention. Okay. Um, you hear some rustling around inside... Uh, well, you know, you're you're standing up on top of the fuel tank and you're looking into the cab, and yeah, it's it's a horror show in here. There's probably a week's worth of fast food bags, a um, couple of crumpled up cans of beer, um, what looks to probably be um, a roach, kind of like sticking out of the edge of a uh, out of a can of Mountain Dew. Um, eventually. Uh, you hear some extra noise in the sleeper, and he clambers up to the front. Uh, he's wearing an, an old grungy. Uh, this T-shirt may have been white when it when he first got it, but some point in time. But it, it's it's yellowed with you know cigarette smoke and sweat. You can, you can smell the booze permeating off of this guy. Uh, even outside the cab through the closed window. So it is a sleeper cab and it seems like he's the only one in there? He's the only one who's climbed up to the front whether or not you uh, can if you want to see if you can pick up any extra sounds, you can go ahead. I'll do um, let's do wits and investigation. No. No, no, I don't. Okay. I don't have time for that. Okay. One dot. Yeah, one dice. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so he he rolls down the window, and it's it, it, this is an old truck. This is not an odd. This is not a. He's uh, cranking not, it. Yeah, he's cranking it. Yeah, the fuck you want? I use dominate. Okay. Let's see. Let me into your cab. I'm getting a sleeper. All right, now what what uh, what dominate power are you using per se here, sir? Mesmerize. Mesmerize. All right, now I'm just double checking the rules on this one here because I am going to be that kind of a dick. <laughs> All right. It lets me do what I want. Okay, now. <laughs> Yeah, whatever uh, I want. Now th this guy this guy is an inebriated mortal. <laughs> However, <laughs> manipulation and dominate versus yeah. intelligence and resolve. Uh, well, here's the thing: you you have to make your rouse check to get it to work. 
I mean, it's going to work regardless, but you have to make your rouse check. Yeah. And, ooh. That is a one. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Okay. That doesn't but mean... I am at hunger four. You are now at hunger four. <laughs> this is going to be bad. And... Neutral ground. You can... <laughs> You can you can almost <laughs> well no, you're you're outside of Ottawa at this point in time so it doesn't really matter no but you you can you can almost taste the the blood in your mouth and you you hear you you hear the voice of your sire so yeah what? fuck him up drain this piece of shit dry and fuck him up real good and I would like to imagine all of that taking place right after he rolls the windows down and I haven't had a chance to say what I'm going to say yet mm -hmm. that so, he's, so when he rolls the window down and says that it sets my internal beast off and I go get into the fucking sleeper now and he, you see him kind of. Okay, all right. He, he, he was having a hard enough time getting out of the sleeper before he just had his mind rolled, but he's he he, he falls into the sleeper. Okay. Now, with that being said, would you think? That what what I did and the, how the situation played out has satisfied the alley cat. Or mm. okay, so oh fuck it. All right, so he Even falls in. Punch. He falls into the cab. I using pretty much all of my resolve left. I open the door without flying off the hinges. And I go in and I grab him by the scruff of his hair and just fucking just clock him across the chin and just latch on. The 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 punch seems to you know rouse him from under or from out from under your mental control, but just as he's about ready to start struggling. That's when the ecstasy of the kiss takes hold, and he is putty in your hands. How much are you going to take? Uh, I'm going to take down to one dot. Okay, so you're not going to kill him? All right. No, I'm going to get rid of three dots. Okay. The, the, the blood has that, that sickly tinge to it that... Only you know the a long time alcoholic would have like you can almost taste the cirrhosis in the vitae. This mm. this guy's <laughs> mm. the bouquet. <laughs> but for for whatever reason, this is the 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 blood uh, the blood of someone who's drunk. It just that's what does it for you. And he slumps down in the back. You leave him laying on his belly. So if he does and end up getting sick, he's not going to asphyxiate on asphyxiate. it. Asphyxiate, yeah. And, and I, I make sure to lick the loons and close it all up. Okay. So he's, he's, he's probably going to have a hard enough time remembering how he got that shiner. But... That will be it. Yeah, DOT comes by and say hey, he's beer all over the place. He's high off his ass. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you get back in Flint's truck and. You're... <sighs> Should we roll? I'm calling the "How am I driving?" bumper sticker <laughs> on the back of the trailer. Yeah, I just saw a beer can come from out of the semi here. He's parked. It's it's bad. Good location. Thank you. Oh my god. 
<laughs> I'm doing my part. <laughs> hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I gotta, I gotta compose myself. <laughs> oh. Headache. <laughs> Well, you're contributing to society. <laughs> One less driver. Shit, Rough, right. hot, crime fighting dog would be proud of me. And, right. as, and so as you are heading back up the highway uh, to Sioux City, uh, Francis, you do get a text back from uh, Zeke. Uh, party tonight? Question mark. Yes. One a.m. Question mark. I I look at the mile marker and see that we have more than enough time to get there, and I text back on the way. Yes. Excellent. We'll order extra balloons. Sweet. So you've you've got a little bit of time to kill here before you get back up to Sioux City. So we got we got the meeting at one. So we're not going to be able to make it back up there tonight. However, we can tell them what we can have a situation completed in what forty eight hours. Sorry, I just I'm in, I'm in a clear head now. Ah. Uh. Oh, it's, what you, so you're side note, um, yeah, Francis, you are feeling a little intoxicated, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm good. God. Now that I got my fix. <laughs> what were we planning again? I know we got. I know we have the part. The party. We're going to meet Jimenez. What we need to do is we need to let Jimenez know how the meeting went to begin with. Yes. But also let him know of our plan to take care of the situation. The situation will be to take one of the less desirable of the cam and make an example of. Yeah. Okay. To dissert the to distance the people around it. If I if I'm seen around here with too many vampires, this is the situation that I will be in. And going off of his speeding rules for here in Sioux City. He doesn't want it messy here. So by making an example of someone saying clean your act up in other places, we're just trying to enforce his speeding rules here in town as well. Calm the herd, yes. But yeah. since it's not on our it's not on our doorstep, it's out of our limits, we're going covert. We're going under the radar. But in the same way as other missions that we've done, we want to make sure that the guy in charge understands what's going on. It'll yeah. be the last time that he'll have to hear about it, and we get the job done. Sounds good to me. And as the truck drives north, heading toward Sioux City, a lot of things are uh, obviously in motion here for the Coterie. <laughs> We've got the situation regarding skin. Uh, we've got the situation regarding Kevin, the ghoul. Uh, we've got the situation now involving the arrangement that Jimenez might have to make. Or, or rather, the arrangement that Jimenez may or may not agree to. And now the issue with the Omaha Anarchs. And after the intermission here, we'll see how Ms. DeWitt fares with her meeting 
with Elisabetta Giovanni. So, say good night, gentlemen. Good night. Night. And we will pick up after the intermission here with Rachel. And welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us. So now we will pivot our attention from the two gentlemen driving back up on I-29 after their interesting encounter. And we are pivoting back over to Sioux City. And there we are. There is our wonderful Ms. DeWitt. Say hello. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I play Rachel DeWitt, the Tremier. There we are. <laughs> So, uh, this picks back up in Sioux City. Uh, a, kind of a flashback, if you will. Uh, the two gentlemen went south on an errand for Prince Jimenez uh, around the same time that uh, Rachel here uh, got a notification that the uh, Hecata Elisabetta Giovanni would uh, be very inclined to have a meeting and she is doing what she can to pencil Rachel in in such short notice uh, due to some uh, poking and prodding from a mutual acquaintance. Now uh, Rachel does not own a vehicle, correct? Uh, no. Okay. So, uh, we will say that arrangements have been made that uh, Rachel would get uh, picked up uh, by one of uh, Ms. Giovanni's associates, and then she would be taken to uh, Elisabetta's uh, I don't want to say haven per se, but we'll, we'll say public haven in the country club neighborhood in the far northwest side of the Sioux City metro area. Now, the car that uh, picks Rachel up from in front of St. Valentine's uh, is a long, sleek, uh, newer four-door sedan. Uh, nothing so gauche as to be like a town car or an actual full-size limo, uh, but it's it's a it's a flashy, you know, four-door sedan that is you can tell just by looking at it is fully loaded. Uh, the gentleman that gets out to open the door for you um, is uh, tall, skinny, pale, uh, kind of mousy, tussled, dark hair. Uh, the suit looks to be off the rack, um, and his tie is not fully on 100% straight. Uh, Ms. DeWitt, uh, hello, uh, my name is Michael. Uh, Ms. Giovanni has sent me to pick you up. Hello, Michael. Yes, thank you very much. And he gestures to the open door for you, and I'm assuming you get in, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Michael closes the door, and he gets back in. Now, uh, the car takes off smoothly. Uh, Michael may not look the part, but he seems to be at least competent when it comes to driving the car. Um... And he doesn't want to impose by trying to force small talk. Um, he will um, speak if spoken to, but uh, it, it's pretty clear that he knows his place in the pecking order. So, um, does Rachel want to strike up any uh, conversation here with the young man? Um, sure. I'm just going to sort of, like, lean back and get comfortable. Michael, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm, I'm doing well, ma'am. Uh, busy as always, but 
I, I, I'm glad to be of service. Sure. Is this the typical type of errand you do? Uh, yes and no. The I, I, I'm, I'm busy uh, all over town, and yeah, I, I, I drive sometimes, a lot sometimes, but yeah, I, I drive, yes. The, the man is clearly nervous. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to know a little bit more about you. You can be at ease. I'm, I'm very harmless. Oh, okay, ma'am. Well, I've, I, I, I've been, I've been instructed to, to not speak unless spoken to. So, um, I, I don't know. What do you, what else do you, do, do, do you want to know about me? Um, how did you come to work for the individuals that you do? Mm, he actually seems to straighten up a little bit, and uh, he he it seems like he finds a, a cold you know steel reserve in him, and he just <laughs> kind of looks in the rearview mirror. It's a family thing. Oh, of course, of course. That makes perfect sense. And I'm sort of satisfied with that, and I'm kind of done talking to him. <laughs> okay. And Michael seems to be relieved with the silence. And the the car drives uh, north along Hamilton Boulevard, which is a, uh, a long stretch of strip malls and uh, shopping centers, restaurants... Um, and then it gives way to, you know, a hilly forested area and, uh, Michael drives the car up into the hills and it's clear that you are no, you are now no longer on public street or a, a public street. This is like a private drive that meanders way up on top of a hill. Um, lots of evergreen trees. Uh, stuff that's not going to lose its foliage in the winter time to afford the the well, for lack of a better term, mansion uh, that the car pulls up in front of uh, the most amount of privacy possible. Uh, Michael stops the car, gets out, and then proceeds to walk out and open your door for you and gives a little respectful bow as you as you exit the vehicle. Okay, and I just, I look back at him. Thank you, Michael. You're you're more than welcome, ma'am. Uh, we should probably figure out what Rachel's wearing tonight. Yeah, um, so this is a bit of an alternative uh, look, a little less buttoned up, so I have kind of this um, black sort of flowy uh, tank top. It doesn't have any sleeves, but... Uh, Rachel kind of likes a little extra layer of modesty, so she's got this black uh, cotton bolero, but the back of it is um, all lace. So you can sort of see, that's like the only, besides the front, the only like hint of skin that you get. And then um, she's just got another one of her black maxi skirts and uh, some ballet flats like usual. Okay. And we also forgot to do our nightly rouse check. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I almost forgot. Okay. Success. Okay. So you are currently at hunger one? Or two? I'm actually at two. Two. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Michael leads you up to the house uh, and opens up the door. Uh, this door appears like it's... You know, it's actual solid wood, and you wouldn't be surprised if it's maybe got some metal reinforcement pressed between, you know, two, you know, sticks of lumber, basically. Um, but no creak. Um, the door, you know, glides smoothly open for you. Uh, the foyer is uh, very, uh, we'll say, subdued but opulent at the same time. There's not a lot of flashy, like, marble 
or, mm. um, you know, a lot of, you know, there's not a lot of gold, not a lot of, you know, fancy schmancy decor, but it's very clear that uh, this this room itself probably cost the same as, like, a typical, like, two-bedroom house would. Um, but standing there in the foyer is the, the woman that you've come to see. Uh, she's, uh, tonight she's dressed in a, um, black evening gown. Uh, she's got, uh, a, a little, a little, a little, uh, little poof of fabric on her, on her left shoulder, Sweet. and it swoops way down, showing off plenty of cleavage and a bare shoulder. Um, her hair's, uh... You know, styled to where it's you know kind of covering the right side of her face. Um, she's wearing uh, also a pair of uh, like we'll, we'll say two-inch heels, um, and they clack as she walks across the hardwood floor to you. Ah, oh, Ms. Dewitt, hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. Hi, uh, my name is Elizabetta Giovanni. Uh, hello. Uh, how how shall I address you? Um, Ms. Giovanni is fine for now. We're of we're course. we're not besties quite yet. No, no, of course not. Well, Miss Giovanni, thank you so much uh, for the ride here, and I'm I'm honored to be here. Yes, and uh, it, it's uh, our, when our our mutual acquaintance reached out to me. Um, he said uh, that you would be someone that it would be worth knowing. And I wanted to just see for myself if that was actually going to be the case. And so far, you have not disappointed. I'm glad to hear it. I hope I can continue to live up to your expectations and surpass them. Well, thank you. And if you'd follow me, uh, she leads the way into um, a sitting room. And Michael has done that skillful thing that all well-seasoned servants do and has vanished without you even noticing that he's gone. <laughs> um, the The sitting room uh, looks like this could be, you know, a, a study out of, you know, some aristocrats, you know, 19th century, you know, summer home. Um, but, you know, bookshelves, the smell of old leather... Um, there's a dim mood lighting. Uh, there is a fireplace in this room, but it is not lit for obvious reasons. Um, but there's a, uh, like three red velvet, uh, you know, love seats, uh, kind of gathered around a, uh, a mahogany coffee table. Um, Elizabetha sits down in one and she gestures for you to sit in the one next to her. I sit down. So, uh, Ms. DeWitt, if you could uh, just, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? I don't know much about you. Sure. Well, um, I'm a part of the uh, Prince's Task Group called the Heartbreakers uh, with my associates, um, Flint and Francis. And um, we do a number of things uh, uh, for him, taking care of his various needs. Um, I myself, I bit of a bit of a head for research and kind of pursuing knowledge is my my main goal. Um, I'm the latest addition to uh, the prince's team, but uh, I believe I'm a valuable uh, asset, especially considering my company. I believe my my mind is a welcome asset. Uh, I, I've always found it very intriguing that, uh, you know, especially in the Camarilla, you all feel the need to, you know, name your coteries. That's just, it's, I mean, I know some of the Anarchs do it, but that seems to be like the Camarilla thing to do is like, oh, I'm so-and-so and I belong to this coterie and oh, and we're called this. And it's it's always, it's, it's very intriguing. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the names make sense and sometimes they don't. Um, but it sounds to me like uh, maybe your companions are, uh, you know, maybe the, the term heartbreaker is a, a bit of a literal expression as far as the, uh, the coteries uh, 
Uh, we'll say, uh, Feng. <laughs> oh, I would say that's accurate. They're definitely a bit of rough trade, but... Mm, yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard stories. I haven't been in I haven't been in Sioux City long, uh, but no, I've 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 heard stories, especially um, about uh, uh, Francis. Uh, he's mm. the he's the he's the Ventru. Yes. Yes. Mm, yes. I've yeah I've I've heard stories. Uh, he's he's a bit of a tough customer for a Ventru, and I'm. I, I would be most uh, I would be most pleased if I could eventually uh, come by your establishment and uh, you know maybe have a have a meeting with everybody. I I, I think uh, th this could be uh, actually the beginning of a very good working relationship. I think that sounds very agreeable. We'd love to have you. Hmm. Um, uh, oh, and where are my manners? Do you want any refreshment, dear? Um. I don't want to impose, but if you're offering, I'd certainly take you up on that. Oh, very well. And she... Michael, come here, dear. And he appears out of a, uh, out of a doorway, kind of uh, positioned behind uh, Elizabetta. Yes, grandmother? Yes, uh, come here, dear. Um, our guest uh, requires some refreshment. He nods, as you, and he silently makes his way over to you, and he moves his shirt off to the side, and he offers his neck to you. Uh, I will dig in. All right. Yeah. So now I don't know if how this jives with my predator type. Uh, you are a Sandman, yes. That's right. Okay. Um. Well, you you can you can take enough to be polite about the matter. Okay. Um. Like just just a just a you know a a, a gentle sip. Okay. Fair um, enough. You, you're you're not under any kind of um we'll say emergency duress. No. Um, if you want, if you want to actually take a full blood point, I will let you do that. But it's going to require a willpower roll. You just um, need one success. Okay. And did my willpower refresh yes. from the last session? Okay, yes, just making sure. Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah. You know what? I'll just. I'm going to roll my willpower here. Okay. Okay. We got. Two successes. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'll I will let you take one blood point okay. or one hunger point away. Okay. And as your fangs sink in, uh, that all you you, you do uh, you know uh, get some sighs of pleasure from your normal um, hunting stock, <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's different when they're actually awake. Yeah. And can fully realize what's going on. Um, so the, his his blood tastes different than a normal mortal's. Um, hmm. And if you wanted to, you know, maybe do some some taste of vita shenanigans here. I was about to say I will go ahead and use taste of blood, which is free. Yep. So. Yep, you do have to roll though. Oh, or, that's right. Uh, I can't. I'm looking it up right now. Okay. Uh, okay. Two seventy two is blood sorcery. Yep. Okay. Case for blood is resolve plus blood sorcery. Okay. So. Alrighty. Now, am I rolling this with two hunger die or one? One. Okay. Just wanted yeah. to make sure. Okay. Here we go. Mm, I'm going to spend willpower. Okay. To reroll. Uh, just two of these guys. 
Okay, I have three successes. Okay. Um, I will determine that you're able to sense that, one, he is a ghoul. Okay. Um, two, uh, the, uh, his, his dom is, uh, we'll say a little bit older than you. Okay. Um, and he's also, uh, the essence that he has would be, um, sanguine. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So you, you, you take your drink, and you lick the wound closed, I'm assuming? Yes, sir. And you pull away, and he's kind of still leaning into it, not quite ready for it to be over. But he eventually... He flutters his eyes a little bit, and he looks at Elizabeth. Thank you, Grandmother. And he gets up, and he... Um, offers his wrist to her, and she also oh, takes perfect. takes a snack. Okay. And after she, um, she pulls away, he seems like he's about ready to faint, but he moves silently back through the door that he came through. Uh, Rachel's definitely like. She prefers him sleeping because she does not like that type of, like, mm-hmm. intimacy. <laughs> so the fact that she just did that, like, in front of her, like, Rachel's, like, a bit unsettled, but she's, like, really trying hard to keep it together. <laughs> okay, I will, I will, uh, I'll make a note. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so, she's, she wipes a little bit from her, from the corner of her mouth. So, um... Our our mutual friend uh, said that there was some business that you would like to discuss with me. Um, yes. In my pursuit of knowledge, um, I'm looking to uh, deal with a certain situation that I feel like you would have uh, a great deal of expertise on. And I would was wondering if you may offer some counsel hmm well it sounds to me like you might have uh, well let's say a certain supernatural problem that the Tremere are not uh, normally suited with dealing is that uh, am I reading the situation correctly so far that is an accurate description hmm well, I would say before we uh, before we get into this further, I think um, all business arrangements need to have the uh, the terms and conditions fully uh, spelled out before uh, anyone ends up way over their head in uh, one way or the other. Certainly. So, I've here here is my proposition for you. Um. I would be willing to offer you um, any education or uh, we'll say minor assistance in, with uh, your, your particular problem. Um, in exchange, uh, I would like for you to teach me some magic. Could uh, magic? I mean, uh, is there anything specific or just generally so? Oh, just anything, really. Uh, I just even even a little, you know, a little tiny spell. Uh, I, I I mean, I don't know if that's exactly how it works, but I I think that would be uh, that would be a fair trade. I'm offering you my expert help in exchange for your expert help. Of course, that's that's perfectly perfectly reasonable. Perfect. Oh, this is going to be so fun. <laughs> so, uh, what uh, what is what is the problem that you're having exactly? Uh, well, 
a place under my care seems to be inhabited by a spirit. Hmm. Okay, well, yeah, this, this city is lousy with, uh, with restless dead. Uh, it's part of the city's bloody past. Hmm. Of course. So, um, what sort of, uh, what sort of things is this spirit capable of? Well, it's been fairly intermittent, but it's been fairly mild things, turning the furniture upside down, for example. Um, my, my experiences so far have been somewhat limited. Um, let me see. And then uh, she's, she, I presume, uh, appeared to me very briefly on in in one instance, but other than that, just generally causing a ruckus, loud mm. noises, startling things, and then, like I said, the furniture. Those have been my most immediate observations. Has anyone actually physically been hurt yet? Not to my knowledge. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, is there anything in particular about this spirit that, I mean, this whole situation is odd, but is there anything that seems to be overtly odd about this spirit? I mean, the spirit seems not at all interested in communication with me. I mean... I suppose the ruckus could be a different sort of attempt to communicate, but uh, she seems very resistant, almost angry. Um, the only other detail is that she appeared to be in uh, some garb from the 60s. Hmm. But I, other than that, I, that, that's about all I know so far. Hmm. Well, see, the, the thing about spirits is there's usually a, a person, place, or thing that they are attached to. And they sometimes they can wander, sometimes they're bound. Um, but it's usually that, that thing is what keeps them here. Uh, so I would make that your first uh, order of business with dealing with your uh, with your uh, problem I, I don't I don't like calling the the restless dead uh, problems they are they're, they're, to me and my kind they're tools tools that can be used and if you can find this thing that uh, your your spirit is attached to, um, if you would bring it to me, I'm sure that uh, we could think of a uh, appropriate reward for you. That makes sense. Yes, I can do that. Interesting. An item she's attached to. And it would be somewhere located in the, in the place where the spirit is occupying. In theory. Now, I, I, I want to stress this could be a... This could be a person, a place, or a thing. It may, it may not necessarily be um, like, oh, here's my, you know, my undelivered love letter to my lost love. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it, it can sometimes be that cliche, dear, but uh, other times it could be, you know, a, 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 a mattress that they might have died in. It, it, it's really hard to say these, these things have very few set rules and expectations, and that is why um, I believe that you've you've come to the right individual to uh, to help you with this. Yes, I I have no doubt. Um, I mean, already some progress has been made in into understanding what's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, Michael comes back through um, through the door, and he leans in, and he's uh, whispering quietly to Elizabetta. 
Mm hmm. Okay, thank you. And she shoes him off. Oh, if uh, if you would just give me one second, dear, I have business to attend to. Please, I I, I will not be long. Of course. And she uh, gets up and she follows Michael out. Is there anything that you would like to do in this uh, brief window? Uh, so I remember you saying it smelled, you know, like leather and stuff. Are there any like books? Oh yes, hanging out. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, I definitely want to take a look at the most juicy looking ones on the shelf. Okay. Uh, now when you say juicy, do you mean like a cult theme? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, anything that would immediately strike me, like the symbology or... Mm -hmm. Um, go ahead and roll intelligence and a cult, please. Tis my best pool. Okay. Come on. Man, I'm trash at rolling. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay, I'm gonna burn another willpower. Because I need that sweet, sweet knowledge. Okay. Take those guys there. Wow. That didn't help at all. Alright, I got three. Okay, so three successes. Yeah. Um, as you are skimming through the bookshelf, um, you do find a, a small black, um, we'll say like pocket journal sized book. Um, and on the spine is... Uh, this is going to be, uh, it's in silver filigree, um, it's, um, uh, an onk. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you pull, you pull it out of the bookshelf, and, uh, the front cover, um, this is, uh, and it's not necessarily, you know, fully, like, full leather. This is almost, like, canvas for the cover, mm -hmm. um, around old, like, you know, bookboard, um. But you open it, and it's actually appears to be a handwritten, uh, uh, a handwritten book uh, titled. Uh, actually, it looks to be a copy of the Book of Nod. Okay. But it, and it, I would recognize it as such. Um. Let's see here. You've you've probably. You've probably heard about the Book of Nod and how it's supposed to be like you know the 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 Canaanite Bible, mm -hmm. um, but you've never actually read any of the text. Okay. So if you are, are you are you going to plop down and uh, give it a give it a good read or what are we oh. going to do here? Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm Rachel can help herself really. Okay. Um, let's see here. I want you to roll, um, wits and awareness, please. Okay. three successes okay so um you're starting to read through um like the beginning passages of the book um and then you start to hear movement in the hall that elizabetta uh, left from so you decide to all right we're gonna put this away don't mm -hmm. want to get caught and uh, we will go over uh what you read um off camera, basically. Okay, cool. Um, and are you going to attempt to get back into your seat, or are you just gonna? Are you gonna be like, hey, you know what? I'm just looking through your fucking books. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna sort of be just like kind of pacing around aimlessly, like I'm not 
deep in a shelf. I'm just sort of like walking around, mm-hmm. super <laughs> casual. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, Elizabetta opens the door, and uh, she's got um, she's got her arms linked with a uh, a young woman. Uh, she's wearing um, a very like uh, like I'm trying to think of the word here. My vocabulary isn't up to snuff tonight. Um, she's oh she's wearing like a very like gossamer white dress. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not quite see through. Uh, if you get it from the right light, however, you know you, you can definitely get the hint of curvature. Um, yeah. But she's got her arms linked, and the, the, the lady's got long, dark hair and uh, pale skin and very bright red lipstick. And Elizabeth sits down in her love seat uh, that she was originally, and the lady she's with just kind of puts her head on her lap like this, and Elizabeth is stroking her fingers through her hair. So, dear, um... Uh... Is there anything else that uh, you had in mind for uh, our conversation this evening? I believe I've presented you with uh, everything everything I had, and I'm looking forward to taking your direction, so I, I, I don't believe so. Is there anything you well, would ask of me now? Well, yes. I, I just want to know how this is going to work. Do I get, like, a wand? Um... I mean, I've got some, you know, some, uh, we'll say paraphernalia uh, when it comes to uh, certain occult practices. I I just didn't know if that was something that I actually needed or um, how we were going to go about you teaching me some magic. Right. Yes, I was pondering that as well. Um, No wand necessary. I suppose if you want, would like one, I don't think there's any harm. Uh as you know any intentionality helps things to manifest but uh it's not required uh do you have um some small pieces of of hematite that's sort of a chrome looking uh heavy metal it's magnetic um i don't off the top of my head but i believe that i could send michael to to track some down or i uh, he can order it off of that amazon a, a Mason, what that 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 website? Yes. Uh, sure. I'm sure it could be found there as well, or any sort of witchy shop will certainly, certainly oh, carry. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that we can find something appropriate. And she leans down and she whispers something in the uh, in the lady's ear, and you hear a. Mm. Oh. Very well, dear. Very well. I know you're hungry, but we'll get to that soon. So, um, yes, I, I do believe that uh, uh, I, I have to move on to the uh, next part of my schedule here. So um, I will have Michael take you back, and uh, you, uh, if you pardon my rudeness, um, I will not be seeing you out. I must attend to my granddaughter here, and that will, uh, that will be it for the night. So, thank you very much for coming, and, uh, Michael? And he appears. Uh, see Ms. DeWitt, uh, safely back to, uh, back to where you picked her up, and dear, this is a really lovely conversation. I would love to, uh, to have a, have a, have more time together. This is, uh, I think the beginning of a very beneficial, uh, uh not, not a friendship per se, but a good working relationship. Of course, yes. I, I agree, Miss Giovanni. And Michael just kind of like gives you the, the head nod, like, hey, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the door, or he closes the door behind you, and he uh, leads the way through the foyer and back out into the driveway where the car is still parked. And he opens the door for you and closes it and he's taking you back so um if you would like to converse with michael you know the spiel yeah (laughs) uh i'm gonna sort of like you know straighten myself up a little bit and uh kind of like 
wishy-washy, almost speak and then don't, and I just am like, um, Michael, I, I hope you weren't made uncomfortable by our interaction. I, I was not expecting, um, that to occur. I hope it didn't cause you discomfort. Oh, no, it, it's, um, uh, it, it didn't hurt. No, I, I'm, I, I, it was, I, I actually like it. Um, see, there's, uh, some, some of my family, uh, when they, mm, uh, it, uh, no, can't say that, can't say that. No, uh, but no, it was, I, I really liked it. And, um, I, I mean, I'm, any time that you, that you want, uh, I'm sure, um, I could work it out with grandmother and we, we, we could do that again. That was, that was really nice. Um, perhaps, yes, I, I could speak to, uh, Miss Giovanni. I just, I just like you to be a little closer to dreamland. Do you know what I mean? Mm, uh, okay, well, I mean, I've, I, I, I've got, like, I, I've got a, a, a connect for, like, X, and, you know, what other, you know, what other, you know, like, acid... I mean, if that's your thing, I can. I'm sure I can. I can make it work. Oh no, nothing so, nothing so so intense as that. Just for you to be a little on the sleepy side, and I oh. can. I can provide that. But no need to worry about it now. I'll. I'll uh, speak to her about it, and and perhaps we can do that in the future. Oh, okay. That would that would be nice. That would be that would be really nice. And he's he's definitely giving you the 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 lovey dovey puppy eyes in the rearview mirror. Um, so how how long have you been um, uh, kindred? Um, you know I'm younger than some, but I have uh, a decade or two under my belt. Hmm. I've I, I've been like how I am for oh he's sitting there and you can it, it's weird he, he's he's driving completely straight and under control but he is not paying attention to the road at all as he's trying to do the math in his head um, I've been I, I've been like how I am for 30, 30 years? 35? I, I, I'd have to actually sit down. Hmm, yeah. Gosh, it's really weird to think about it like that. Huh. Yeah, Ho so. Hopefully many more to come for you. Oh, um, I've been... I, I, keep, I keep getting told every year that oh, it'll be next year. It'll be next year. It'll be next year. But I, they've, they, they they keep me, like like this. But I I've, I, I'm useful. I'm useful. I, I'm very useful. And if you know, I, I could I could quit at any time, and I could come work for you. If that would be something that you'd you'd like, I I'm I'm sure I'm sure I could make an arrangement with grandmother about it. I'm sure that they have their reasons for the weight that you're experiencing and I think it's best you stick to your family for now but who knows what could happen in the future mm. uh, 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 okay I, I, I understand and it's just like flipping a switch he's silent the rest of the way back to the building yes. And but he does he does politely get out and open the door, and um, he opens the front door of the building for you as well, and he, get, he gives you a, a light bow. Good night, Miss Dewitt. Good night, Michael. And I give him this sort of like kind of creepy, glassy-eyed smile, kind of a frozen face, just. <laughs> and he he does squirm a little bit. <laughs> But he he does 
get back into the car and he leaves. And it is around this time that uh, the this the familiar sound of uh, Flint's pickup can mm. be heard turning the corner and into the parking lot. So that is where we will end tonight's episode. <laughs> This is I, I had a lot of fun with I was so excited. This was this was nice. This was a nice yeah, change of pace. I and, loved it. And this should be uh I, I'm I I told uh I told Greg and Steve to not tell you about their escapades. He has not told me. He is practically busting at the seams, though. He was like, I wish I could tell you. He was, like, so jazzed after your session. He was just, like, ready. I was like, he's like, but he said we can't say anything, so I'm super excited to see how this all shakes out. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be a lot of fun. But, super excited. Uh, Alright, well, that will, that will be it. Uh, this is a, a shorter episode than normal, but and this 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 works out. So peace out. Good night. Bye. And we'll catch you in 2 weeks. Deuces. <laughs>